how I got to Appalachian State is a really funny story because I grew up in Northern Virginia. Uh, my parents both educators. My dad was an elementary school principal. My mom a kindergarten teacher. Never heard of Appalachian State in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and so then we took the, you know, piled it in the car and, and headed down. And, and as soon as I crossed the mountain, it was funny, we had, uh, they had a snowstorm. I remember crossing over the mountain and just being like in awe. It was just, uh, it was beautiful. And uh, so we, we took the tour and walked around and I realized this was a great place for me. Not only was it just, just the right feel, but what really, uh, what really uh, struck me, for me personally, was that it was six hours away. <laughs> and I knew that there was no hope that I would be going home on weekends. I, I couldn't wait to get to college. I couldn't wait to get, you know, away from home and start living life. And uh, yeah, Boone was a dry county, which I didn't realize when I put in my application. That was one of the things that uh, I got a lot, of, a lot of grief from my friends on, like how in the world did I end up in a place that uh, didn't have alcohol? But uh, anyway, so I got there and so it was kind of a different environment. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything I was used to. And it was a lot of fun. It was just, it was, I, I, I tell kids now when I meet kids or parents that have kids that are thinking about going to school, that uh, there is no better place in the world to go to college than Appalachian State. So when I got to App State, uh, my thought was business. I was gonna be a business major, going to marketing, sales, this is, this is my future. And then I met uh, Dr. Randy Edwards, and uh, that changed my whole uh, life because I could not get through accounting. And uh, he had every reason and every right to, to send me on my way. Uh, so I, I realized after spending two years as a business major uh, that I needed to do something else. So I thought, criminal justice, that's the way. And that was actually uh, the best decision I could have ever made, but just it was the courses I enjoyed a lot more. Uh, not only the criminology courses, but that also got me in the political science realm, that got me in history, uh, sociology, psychology, all those things kind of came together, and those were courses I really enjoyed. So when I decided to go into criminology, or criminal justice, um, originally it was to be a lawyer. I wanted to go to law school. And as I continued my, my ongoing uh, struggles to make class and to, to, do, my, to do my assignments and, and the academic side of college life, uh, I realized that there was no way I was going to law school. So um, what's plan B? Well, plan B for me was uh, doing an internship with a company founded by former Secret Service agents. Um, I met a guy playing church softball named Tom Pacusa and said, hey Tom, you know, I know you work for a security company. Is there any chance that they would be willing to take on an intern? So fast forward, now it's late 80s. Um, I said, well, we're, we're in the middle of hiring some folks so we can offer you a job at $10 an hour and you can you know, get on the phones and, and work on the hiring line. And then a month later, they offered me my first full-time job at $20,000 a year. And I thought I'd hit the lottery. It was, uh, it was great and I spent uh, 15 years there worked my way up to managing director before I left to uh, start my career and start a security program at Mars Incorporated. And in that process, um, I went on to travel the world and yeah, so I've run protective operations in over 80 countries and that's how it all started. So as, I, as I've told people before, I was the ultimate bad alumni. I was the guy that, that skirted the calls, never, never sent, I think I sent money in one time uh, to the Yosef Club, I think I sent 30 bucks one time. And I, I'm, I was at, at the beach and it was Labor Day weekend and we're watching uh, App State in Tennessee. And I'm getting excited, I'm getting fired up, I'm starting to yell and scream and get loud. Unfortunately, we didn't win. But what did come out of that was my son-in-law looked at me and he said, I would love to go to a football game down there. And I said, well, you know, I haven't been back in, I couldn't even remember how long it had been since I'd been back. So I said, I said, well, let me reach out. I'll make a phone call. We'll see about getting tickets. Called, got this guy, Brian Tracy, answers the phone and says, he said, well, we'd love to host you for a game. You know, so I went down and I saw Texas State. We get there and, and again, the way the university had grown, the growth of the university, I was just, oh, I was blown away. I mean, I was blown away how amazing it looked. Uh, I got to meet Doug Gillen. I, I loved Doug's enthusiasm. I, I loved his vision. And then from Doug, I got to go up uh, farther and, and was introduced to Dr. Sherry Everts. 
and immediately meeting Sherry, I got the same passion. Uh, the vision and her vision for what she wanted Appalachian State to become. When you make an investment, you make an investment in the people. And for me, it was an easy investment uh, between Sherry and Doug and, and Brian and, and everything that was going on. So it was just an easy, easy uh, way to get involved. And, and I was fortunate enough that they, they welcomed me and, and yeah. So when I got to meet um, Sherry and Doug and I got to be involved more with the university, I got to be privy to some, some opportunities and they asked me to be on the board. And that was something that I never even dreamed of. I was blown away. Uh, it was an honor. I'm still, uh, every day, I, I still just shake my head and can't believe that I get to be part of, uh, part of that. You have all those people with all this passion and all this excitement for Appalachian. It was easy to get fired up. Uh, it was easy to be part of the team. And, and with the goals and, and what we're doing and going forward, uh, I, I was just fortunate enough that they let me be in the room. And one of the things that's important to me is that each and every one of us are blessed in many different ways. I am overly blessed. I think I've, I've gone to that well many, many times. And so it's extremely important for me to give back. When you get to that point where you can help, you gotta help. If we don't help each other out, we're, we're, never, gonna, we're never gonna accomplish anything. And it just feels right. And uh, that's the way I've always been. And, and now I'm in a position where I'm fortunate enough that I can actually do it. So I think the, the highest honor that you can receive as an alumni of Appalachian State is to receive the Distinguished Alumni Award. And the fact that I am being given that award is, is mind-blowing to me because obviously my path, my journey, uh, my 19-year-old self would have never seen this moment coming. Uh, to be able to accept this award, to be able to be in the company that I'm in. When Sherry called me and said, congratulations, you're being, uh, you're, you're the award winner this year. I said, you're kidding. Uh, I read, I read our magazine that comes out. I read these stories of these great, these great alumni and, and some of the things they've accomplished. And I just, I have a passion for Appalachian State, but my, what I've done doesn't compare. And I am in awe of those people. I'm in awe of the predecessors that have won this award. And, and I'm honored to be in that club. So uh, I will not be, I will not be, I'll be sitting in the back of the room just uh, in awe the whole time. I am, I am truly honored.